It is now time for member statements. Member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ontario is known around the world for its iconic pure waters, the vastness of its pristine wilderness, but our reputation is becoming further and further from reality. The amount of plastic debris, including bottles, bags, straws, that litters our shorelines has increased drastically in recent decades. The Single-Use Plastic Ban Act is a comprehensive plan that has gone through consultations with experts. The act is a sober response to the escalating and urgent environmental crisis that throwaway plastics present. For far too long, we have let industry make their own rules. The Liberals and Conservatives have ignored the need for environmental action and the climate crisis itself. The time for us to act is now. We need to begin the work of making Ontario a cleaner province today. I know the government likes to talk about this issue, but they have provided absolutely no timelines, no dates to get us from where we are now to where we need to go. Ontarians deserve a government that exhibits the political courage to put tangible pressure on corporations and manufacturers in order to stop the inundation of our landfills with harmful plastic waste. My plan is ready to become law, and if this government truly cares about the environment and about reducing plastic pollution, they will take action now, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the coldest night of the year is an initiative that takes place annually in 136 communities across Canada to raise funds for local charities that help the homeless, hungry, and hurting people in our communities. Milton recently held its annual coldest night of the year, organized by the Milton Transitional Housing. My team and I were delighted to be part of such a noble cause. By conducting the walk on a cold winter night, it allows everyone to experience a hint of the challenges faced by homeless during the winter and for those who battle to house and feed their families, Mr. Speaker. Many Miltonians stepped outside the warmth and comfort of their homes to be part of this walk and to be part of the solution in our community. These donations fund critical services in our Milton transitional housing an organization that serves and supports vulnerable families and individuals in Migrate Riding of Milton. Milton raised 98 per cent of our target, <laughs> amounting to almost $50,000. These funds will support our local citizens that need our help the most during the cold months. I want to thank each and every member of our community that came out, and especially Donna Donnelly and her team for organizing yeah. such a great event. Way to thank go, you, Donna. Mr. Introduction of visitors, the member or sorry, member statements. <laughs> member statements. The member for, for our University of Rosedale. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I've received many les letters from residents who study, work, and enjoy the University of Toronto. Residents who are very angered by the Ford government's changes to higher education. These changes include undemocratic tampering with how students choose to fund vital student programs, from the local radio station to student unions to mental health services. These changes include massive cuts to OSAP grant funding, which means low- and middle-income students will go further into crippling debt to get an education that is so critical to getting ahead in this cutthroat economy. And these drastic changes include cuts to university funding at a time when universities in Ontario receive the least amount of government funding per student in Canada. That means we will see higher class sizes, we will see cuts to courses and programs, and we will see job losses and lower wages for sessional teachers, food service workers, cleaners, the people who keep the University of Toronto operating and who are in precarious situations already. I will be joining students and workers this Wednesday at 12 p.m. as part of a province-wide walkout to say no to these cuts and yes to a better higher education where universities and colleges are properly funded, where student loans are converted to grants so students can afford to go to university, and where sessional teaching jobs are upgraded to permanent teaching jobs so students can receive a high-quality education in Ontario. I invite you to join us. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
On Sunday, March 10, an Ethiopian Airlines plane carrying 157 passengers, 18 of which were Canadian, crashed, leaving no survivors. This devastating tragedy has affected people around the world and has saddened all of us in my riding of Simcoe North, as we learned that one of the victims was a member of our community, a young woman named Angela Rayhorn. Angela was only 24 years old, but throughout those 24 years, it is clear that she touched many lives and made the world a better place through her commitment to the communities that she lived in and the passion she had for the environment. During her high school years, she attended Patrick Fogarty Catholic Secondary School, played competitive soccer with the Aurelia Lightning team, and swam competitively with the Aurelia Channel Cats. Upon graduating high school, Angela went on to graduate from Dalhousie University in 2017 with a double major in marine biology and sustainability. Her passion for conservation led her to work on both the west and east coasts of Canada. Angela worked as a conservation intern with Pacific Rim National Park Reserve in British Columbia, as well as an aquaculture research technician with the Huntsman Marine Science Centre in New Brunswick. She recently moved back home and was working with the Kutachin Conservancy as part of the third phase of her Canadian Conservation Corps journey. Her hard work in the field and her tremendous contributions did not go unnoticed, and she was chosen as a youth representative at the 4th UN Environment Assembly gathering in Nairobi, Kenya. She was en route when the tragedy occurred. Our hearts ache for Angela's family, friends, and all those whose lives she's touched. She is remembered as a shining, bright star, a fearless champion for the environment, and a change maker. I hope she inspires all of us to look at life with this kind of beautiful appreciation for the world and communities around us. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mishkikawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I rise today to share some tragic news about two beloved constituents from Mishkikawak, James Bay. Vendredi passé, nous avons Last Friday, there was the death of Nicole and Jody Blair when they were in a helicopter from Sudbury to Cap Casing. Nicole Bisson Blais is the cousin of Gilles Bisson. On the 4th of March, Nicole and Judy left, as they normally did, to go back home in Cap Casing, but they never arrived to their destination. On the 6th of March, they were uh, declared as being lost, and which led to an operation to find them around the region, spend their days on their snowmobiles searching for Jody and Nicole. They were subsequently joined by Royal Canadian Air Force, the OPP, Civil Aviation, the Timmins, Porcupine Search and Rescue. On Monday, March 11, the Air Force discovered the area of the accident are merely 65 kilometers from their destination. Judy and Nicole se sont éteints à cause de died because of this um, crash. I'd also like to highlight all of the work of the, uh, the first responders, uh, Gilbert Mondou, and everyone that spent their time. And you've all demonstrated that this community is very strong and is always ready to come and help those that are in a distress situation. Rescue team, my colleagues, Gilles Bisson, John Vantoff, MPP, Carol Hughes, Charlie Angus, and the government for their help. Once again, I'd like to send my uh, deepest sympathies to the Blair family. Member statements. The member for Guelph. Speaker, it's with a heavy heart that I rise today in solidarity with my Muslim neighbours to mourn the loss of at least 50 people killed in two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. I want to sincerely thank the Muslim Society of Guelph for opening your doors at Friday prayers for people in our community to grieve and to speak out against hate. Speaker, we're not immune to such hate here in Canada. It was only two years ago that six people were killed in a Quebec City mosque. As we approach March 21st, the International Day for the Elimination of Racism, I'm asking all Canadians, especially political leaders, to reject racist dog whistles and to disavow white supremacist views and those who express them. We simply cannot allow the roots of such hate to spread in our country. We must also speak out against all forms of terrorism, 
whether it was New Zealand last week in Pulwama, Jammu in Kashmir attack last month in India, in Pittsburgh last year, or right here in the streets of Toronto. It is our duty to speak out against all forms of hate and racism. We must build bridges, not walls. And to our Muslim brothers and sisters, we grieve with you and we stand in solidarity with you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with heavy heart that I rise today in the legislature to speak about the passing of my dear friend and youth community leader, Abhi Varman Arul Praranga. Abhi Varman was always quick with a big smile, supportive of his friends and family, and passionate about being involved in and improving his community. He wants to have a positive impact on the world around him and work towards that goal every day. It is a great loss to his family, friends, and community that Abhi Varman has left us at the tender age of 17, yet we will always treasure the memories of him and he will forever remain in our thoughts and prayers. Like my friend Abhi Varman, as many as one in five children and youth in Ontario will experience some form of mental health challenge. Because of the stigma attached to mental illness, it is often hard for those struggling and their families and friends to talk about what they are going through. All level of government, communities, friends and families need to ensure that they need to do all they can to support those struggling with their mental health and help each and every Canadian know that we are with them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. As you know, I'm an Army brat. I grew up on military bases. My dad, a career soldier, also served in the Second World War. I've been a member of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 255 for more than 30 years, and today it's an honour to tell you about an initiative along the Highway of Heroes. It'll be the world's largest living memorial. Canada has lost 117,000 men and women in military battles since Confederation. We had 159 killed in the war in Afghanistan, including Andrew Grennan from Windsor. Their bodies were flown home, repatriated at CFB Trenton, and then driven to the coroner's office in Toronto. That 170-kilometer trip became known as the Highway of Heroes. Well, there's an effort underway to plant two million trees along that stretch of highway to recognize all Canadians who have served during times of war. This living tribute will help clean the air, cool the environment, and provide an inspired drive along an otherwise somewhat boring stretch of highway. There's a $10 million fundraising campaign underway to help pay for this special project. They're about halfway there. I hope the senior levels of government will kick in a good chunk of the money that's left to be raised. Speaker, charitable tax receipts are given to all donors. More information is available at hohtribute.ca. The Highway of Heroes Tree Campaign is unique, and Speaker, I wish the organizers every success in achieving this remarkable goal. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member from Mississauga Lakeshore. Mr. Speaker, February was Heart Health Month in Canada. Earlier, earlier last month, the Heart and Stroke Foundation had an advocacy day here at Queen's Park. I would like to take this opportunity to thank them for their excellent reception and productive meetings throughout the day. Heart disease is the second leading cause of death in Canada. About 2.5 million Canadian adults live with heart disease, but one in Nine in ten Canadians have at least one risk factor. Results can be devastating, not only to the individual, but to the entire family. Fortunately, the, the cardiac care program at the Trillium Health Partners in my riding of Mississauga Lakeshore is providing excellent care. I know most of you are not aware. I am living with a mechanical heart valve myself. There is much we can do to protect ourselves. Almost 80 percent of heart disease can be prevented through healthy living, eating healthy, being active and living without smoking. 
Again, thank you to the Heart and Stroke Foundation, generosity and do of donors, and over 40,000 volunteers. It's, it's making a real difference in reducing the death and disability for heart disease. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I am pleased to acknowledge the Durham District School Board in Whitby and the good work it's doing in promoting the skilled trades. By 2025, according to the Conference Board of Canada, about 40% of all occupations in the province will be in the skilled trades, and the skilled trades labour shortage speaker is expected to approach a staggering 360,000. Now, this means, Speaker, that there will be an abundance of well-paying, good jobs in Ontario in the skilled trade sector well into the future. And students who have an aptitude for skilled trades should be encouraged, Speaker, to pursue a career in that sector, whether it be in carpentry, plumbing, or electricity, to name only a few. And it's equally important, Speaker, that educators at all levels highlight to students that skilled trades training leads to lucrative and rewarding careers. And much of the highlight of this particular uh, initiative, our Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities has drawn attention to it as well. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements. I recognize the member for Meshkigawak, James Bay, on a point of order. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I said uh, Nicole Bisson Blais. I would like to correct my record. Her name is Nicole Blais. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Reports by committees. I recognize the member for Mississippi.